friend of mine sent me this photo and we agreed this photo clearly shows that the light shining on these clouds is shining from below the clouds now what light source could that be if not the sun of course it's the sun it's a sunset it's a nice it's a pretty picture pretty clouds the sun in this picture is clearly below the clouds if you happen to believe that the earth is flat the sun being below the clouds is kind of a problem so what could this mean this kind of thing happens all the time really watch any sunset if there are clouds in the sky during the sunset or the sunrise you often will see this sort of phenomenon these are pictures i took myself something very similar and i think you can see that the clouds are pretty and they're lit from underneath here's another one very pink i like the color on this one pink but as you can see lit from beneath here's another one um, this guy looks like it's on fire this is a really gorgeous sunset but in los angeles we get this all the time it's it's kind of known for it here's another one again we're looking west out at a sunset um, and we see that the the light right here hitting this cloud is shining from underneath the tops of the clouds are dark and the undersides here's another one the bottom of this cloud is bright and the top is dark um, so these shots indicate that pretty much every sunset and every sunrise as well the sunlight comes from underneath somehow and if you believe that the earth is flat and you believe that the sun is circling over the clouds that's a problem how do you work out how the light can do that how can the light get up underneath the clouds uh, the same fellow who sent me that original photo he drew a diagram that I think explains pretty well and let me share that diagram right now starts off with the sun is above the clouds shining downward and it's going to shine on the top of the clouds and then later in the afternoon the sun moves to the side it doesn't go lower it just moves to the side and now it it lights up the sides of the clouds but still from above but as the day gets near its end the sun is and this diagram shows it the sun is clearly below the clouds lighting from underneath um, and the explanation that goes with this diagram is that what we're seeing in this diagram right here is perspective what do we mean by that we know that as things get farther away from us they appear to get lower if they're above us right things like the sun is above us so as it goes farther away it appears to lower easy enough to show um perhaps we could show it with this camera right here this ball is here above me but as i move it away see how it gets lower in the frame it's higher gets lower as i just move it away perhaps you perhaps let, let's try that again and this time i will just push my whole chair back so we can be sure i'm not lowering the ball here we go as i move away the ball goes lower so that's what's happening here in this diagram we're seeing that even though the sun actually is above the clouds it looks like it's below the clouds and that is perspective okay um i, I there's nothing wrong with any of that so far except for the problem that that last statement the, the sun looks like it's below the clouds because of perspective but it isn't actually below the clouds that's the claim right to which my answer is if the sun isn't actually below the clouds how is its light coming from below the cloud now this is twisted up in an understanding of perspective so let's let's take a look let me redraw this diagram here's my cloud and here's the sun this is what we see in those photos we see that the light from the sun is coming from below the cloud and illuminating the underside 
of the cloud somehow. We can agree that this is an accurate diagram somehow. We're just not agreeing on why this is accurate. Could it be that the real position, now this is not a perspective diagram, this is a diagram of what's actually happening in the flat earth scenario. Um, the clouds are above us and the sun is above the clouds. And this is the correct diagram not showing any perspective. This is just a diagram of where things actually are, not where they look like, but where they are. So if the sun actually is above us like so, then its light comes towards us like so and hits the cloud not on the bottom, but on the top. So if I draw the diagram this way, showing what the sun actually is, the position of the sun actually is supposed to be in the flat earth. It's supposed to be up there, right? Um, not, not down below. So could perspective somehow explain it? Is the problem with this diagram the fact that I haven't shown it in perspective? Okay, what we've worked out is that this light on this cloud is definitely coming from somewhere below horizontal, below the level of the cloud. So I drew a dotted line there to establish that's definitely where the light is coming from. And we know that, um, that we know that things as they're farther away, they look lower. So maybe I need to lower the sun because it's farther away to make the diagram accurate. That's a claim I hear fairly often um, about perspective from flat earth folks. Now, this diagram, we could accept this. This is now not a diagram of the way things actually are. It's a diagram of how things look. They, the sun looks like it's right there um, below the cloud, but it's really not. It's perspective that makes it look like that. Okay, I can go along with that. This is a perspective corrected diagram. We could, we could say that. But if we do say that, we have to acknowledge that now light on this diagram does not travel in straight lines. Let me put, let me put up here um, a link to a previous video where I describe what perspective is and how perspective works. And in that video, you'll see that the main point was perspective is caused by the principle that light normally travels in straight lines. Light traveling in straight lines is what causes perspective. Perspective is not a magical thing that just happens. It's not a feature of our eyes. It's not a feature of light moving in a particular way, except that light has to travel in straight lines. If light travels in straight lines, the result is perspective. Um, and this diagram, we've corrected it to show where the sun appears to be. And because of that, the light cannot travel in straight lines like this. The light from the sun would have to travel up and it would have to go up and down and curve to correct it for what it appears to be doing um, in perspective. In reality, we recognize and we agree that in the flat earth model, the sun is here above the cloud and the perspective diagram, it should be drawn this way. This is the line of sight from the observer to the cloud. This is the line of sight from the observer to the sun. And as you can see, the line of sight to the sun, which is a straight line, assuming that light travels in a straight line here, is below the cloud. The line of sight is below the cloud and that is why the sun appears to be below the cloud. This diagram has light traveling in straight lines. So in this diagram, the sun remains physically above the cloud and the light from the sun is traveling downwards as it passes the cloud. Unfortunately, this cannot light a cloud from underneath. So uh, it occurs to me that um, I should really show this in 3D. The, uh, the 2D side view diagrams that we've been doing, sometimes they're kind of contentious because those orthographic side views have no perspective. 
and that you know it, it confuses the issue so here it is in 3d same side view um, again no perspective right now this is the orthographic side view just like the powerpoint diagram so this is my sun a little yellow sun here and this is this oval thing is supposed to be a cloud and i've got my little skeleton warrior standing underneath the cloud and then this is a green disc it's actually in this whole scene is in 3d so this is actually a disc and we'll see that when we look at it from different angles from the side view it just looks like a green thing this this line is is a 3d beam coming from the sun down to the cloud to illustrate the angle that the the sunlight is coming at the cloud with and also the sun i've got in in here a light source connected to the sun and we can see that that light source is lighting the cloud from the top and so this matches just like our powerpoint 2d side view the reason i'm taking it into this 3d view is so that we can get perspective in the diagram if I click right here, it'll take us into a perspective view. So we're still on the side view now, but with perspective turned on. And it, it doesn't change things all that much um, when you're on a side view. So on, on the side view, it still looks kind of like that. But now we can also move around. I can move around the scene and look at the scene from different angles and different positions, okay? So we can get a better sense of what's really happening in the 3D world. Um, one thing we should probably do right away is get down, get down to the skeleton's point of view here and look up at the sky from where the skeleton would be looking. And uh, yeah, you know, something like that. Let's look over the skeleton's shoulder up at the sun and we can see that um, the sun appears to be below the cloud from the skeleton's point of view. And that's because of perspective, right? Perspective makes the sun look like it's lower in the sky than the cloud, even though we know that it is still, the sun is still up there higher in the sky. But the sun's light still has to follow that same straight line path that hits the top of the cloud. And we see that right here, the beam of light coming and getting cut off because it's it has hit the top of the cloud. Okay, um, right there. See, looking at it, it's I'm not I haven't changed anything. The sun is still higher than the cloud, but um, from down here it looks like it's lower, and that's perspective. But it doesn't let the sun's light hit the bottom of the cloud. I want to look at it from the reverse angle. So we've looked at it from the skeleton's point of view. We've looked at it from the side view. Let's now look at it from the sun's point of view. I find this extremely illuminating. From this angle, if I look right down the beam, the beam vanishes because I'm inside the beam here. From this angle, we're looking straight down at the cloud from the way the sun would be looking. And we can see very clearly in perspective that the cloud where it's where the cloud is facing the sun that's the part that will be lit by the sun and that is the top of the cloud right so nothing changes as we look as we move around it just changes our point of view changes our perspective on the scene i have lowered the sun now in order to get the light to hit from the bottom of the cloud you need the sun to be below the cloud somewhere. I'm making no attempt to explain how this happens at this point in the video, only trying to show that light on the bottom of the cloud indicates that the sun must be below the cloud somehow. So um, here it is in that side view, no perspective side view, and we see a straight line beam from the sun now hits the bottom of the cloud. So we'll turn on perspective and we'll look around. Here's the skeleton's point of view of the scene. Let's get in on the skeleton a little bit. Here's the skeleton's point of view of the scene. The sun is now much lower. Of course, we know that it actually is lower than the, the cloud in this diagram. And the cloud 
we can see has been lit. The cloud is lit from underneath. Uh, when we, even when we look at it from this point of view here, um, the cloud is lit underneath because the sun is underneath the cloud. All right, let's see it from that reverse angle also. Let's look at it from the, the sun's point of view. We we'll look straight down the beam of light again. And now we see what parts of the cloud are lit by the sun. And it is the bottom of the cloud that the sun can see. And that's the part that the, the light is going to hit. Okay, now maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you think um, I, that's not how perspective works. I think perspective does something different. I think that when you separate two objects by a great distance, that the light will curve underneath and, and scoop up. Like maybe the light from the sun, as it comes towards us, is going to go underneath the cloud and hit it from the bottom. Then I invite you, please, to test it. Here's, a, here's an example of how to test it. I've just got two tables of the same height, two tables that are at the same height across a long level floor. And I'll just put a box or a book or something on one of the tables. And on top of that, I'll drop a laser, a little laser pointer, and shoot it straight across. You know, it doesn't even have to be straight across. You can set it at any angle. You can use a flashlight instead of a laser, any light source and put it on the one table elevated just a little bit above that one. So in this example, this table represents the cloud and this table with the, with the raised surface represents the sun. So here's the sun beaming a light towards this cloud. And then push this table back, push the tables apart as far as you can and tell me how far do you have to separate them before the laser beam from this table somehow comes down here and hits this table from underneath. Um, I think you see from this diagram that cannot happen. This is Again, this is not drawn with that perspective taken into account in the diagram. This is a diagram of how things physically are. But one thing we understand about light is that, you know, setting refraction aside, the light is going to travel in straight lines. So as long as the light is traveling in straight lines, this diagram remains accurate and the laser cannot hit the bottom of this table. If you can make it hit the bottom of the table by separating it far enough, please share that experiment with me. I, I'd love to see that. Sunsets that look like this are really pretty common. Uh, just go out in the evening and observe and see what there is to see. You'll see many times as the sun sets down below the horizon, the bottoms of the clouds light up in brilliant oranges and reds. Um, it's beautiful. Sunset watching. Go ahead and take a look and then think about it for a minute and think, how did that light get underneath those clouds? It's worth a thought.